Hi and welcome to my channel Rapid Vectors. In today's tutorial we're going to create a parallax background effect with a background layer and a middle layer here. We are then going to change the motion scale so that we get this desired effect. Now before we create our parallax background we will first extend the platform and then when the player runs across the platform we will see our parallax background extending. So let's head over to the tile map, we'll choose our tile again, and then let's just extend that. The tile map, and then now head over back to the warped collections, and in the assets under warped files, PNG environment layers, we want to use the background and the middle ground. So head over to the project and let's create a new folder called background. And inside that folder, let's copy those two files inside there. Now add a child node and we'll put a parallax background layer. So we'll go to canvas layer and we want the parallax background node. And let's just pop that to the top. And then inside of this node, add another child node and we'll choose parallax layer. So inside this parallax layer, we want to use the background sprite. So add a child node and we'll add sprite 2D and then drag over the background into the texture. And then what we can do, we need to move this texture so that it sits just above the platform here so we'll turn centered off and then the sprite origin will be in the top left what we want to do now is go to parallax layer and we need to mirror the sprite so that as we move along the platform the parallax layer will be mirrored along with the movement so the first thing to check is what is the size of the background. So go back to your Warps asset collection and then look at the size. So it's 240 by 176 in pixels. And as we can see, the background is actually smaller than the viewport. So we need to duplicate this uh, sprite and then layer it as well so what we can do is first of all mirror the original sprite here so you put to mirror you just need to put in the size of what the dimensions of the background is and we only want to mirror on the x-axis so what we do we put 240 in there then let's reposition our parallax background so it sits in this region here so to do that, we just need to offset the y-axis and we'll put it about here and then let's run the game. So as you can see, it's starting to mirror, but we do have some blank space still here. So we can easily fix that. So just stop that. What we want to do is to use the current sprite we have but duplicate it and make it a bit wider because the original background doesn't fit within the viewport so what you can do is go back to the parallax layer and dupe and double the size so we'll say the mirror effect is twice the size of the background size and what that will do that will mirror from this point onwards so if we run the game again you can see that it's mirroring in this way what we need to do is to fill this missing space and to do that you just duplicate the sprite and then move the second sprite into this position and you can do that by just going back to the transform so it should be 240 which is the width and then run the game again. 
And if we run all the way to the end of the platform, we can see that we've now got a parallax background, which is filling in the space as a player runs ahead. I'm just going to rename this parallax layer as background parallax layer. And then let's create a new parallax background layer. So add child node and then choose parallax layer again. But we'll call this middle ground. And then add a child node, which is Sprite 2D. And then in the texture, let's pop the middle ground in there. So as we can see, we've got our middle ground positioned here. So we need to turn centered off again. And this will position it just above the background layer. We need to now check the size of that middle ground. Back in the assets collection, let's just have a look at that. And this is slightly larger at 272 pixels on the X axis. So what we want to do is go back to the parallax layer and mirror it at exactly the width. And let's run the game again. And we have the same issue as previous. So what we can do is do as we've done before and on the mirror, make that twice as large and then duplicate our child our sprite 2d node and then change the position so it fills in that missing gap so we'll just say 272 and now let's run the game so that is now working however we don't have a parallax or a sliding effect on the middle ground and the way we can do that is first go back to the background parallax layer and we have a motion scale so i want to leave this at one because that's at the background and that's the furthest away and then every layer that you have on top of that you can change the motion scale so i'll change it to something like 0.9 and we only want to affect it on the X axis. So I'll keep the Y axis at one because I don't want the motion scale to change vertically. And then just run that game again. And as you can see, the background is just moving. And you can change these values in the motion scale to get your desired effect. Now, as you can also see from the view, We've got all this gray color on our screen. So if we run the game, you can see all this is gray. So what I want to do is to choose a color that blends in better with this. It's more useful to choose a color that blends in with the parallax layer that's in the foreground rather than the one that's in the background. So what you can do is you go back to your project settings and then scroll down to rendering. Go into environment and you can change that default green color so what we can do is just click that and choose the eyedropper and what i'm going to do is i'm going to choose this prominent purple color and what i'll do is i'll choose that and just close and what i have now is i have a better blending within the middle ground layer which is the one that's closest to the player and then everything else is hidden in the background Let's run that game again. And as you can see, I have a better blend between my actual background and foreground. So before we finish, let's click the parallax background and let's drag that into our backgrounds folder. Let's save that as a scene. And now we can use this in future levels. So now that the parallax background is complete, in the next tutorial, we will be starting to use more of the tile map to actually develop the platforms, some caves, and generally creating more level design. If you like what you've seen in this tutorial, please remember to hit like and subscribe. And thank you for watching.